Okay, hello everyone. So let us now have a brief review of inverse trigonometric functions. So as you can see here, we have a, a right triangle and we have an unknown distance d <clears throat> and uh, our angle here is 30 degrees. Okay, so in order to find d, uh, we need to use um, tangent, right? So this is tangent 30 degrees is equal to opposite of our adjacent, which is 5 over d. Then we will get d is equal to 5 over tangent 30 degrees, right? So let's calculate. Let's take out our calculator and um, we have um, 5 divided by tangent 30 degrees, right? So we have here uh, 5, 5 squared of 3. Okay. So that's how you get that, right? So what about if it's the other way around? If we are given the 5 square root of 3 here and we are asked to, to find the angle, okay? So how do you do that? So th this is where the inverse trigonometric functions come in. So how do you solve this? Okay, so um, we know that that is a tangent theta is equal to opposite over adjacent, right? That is 5 over 5 square root of three okay so how do you do this so we have the inverse we need to use the inverse tangent so or arc tangent so tangent inverse of five over five square root of three theta okay let's uh take a look how we're going to use this use the calculator to solve this so shift tangent then we have here five all over five square root of three Okay, so let's see if we will get 30 degrees. So definitely we got it. So we have here 30 degrees. Okay. So that is um, the use of our inverse trigonometric functions. And you might be wondering that um, why does these trigonometric functions have inverses? So if we take a look at the graph of an inverse uh, of a sine function, right? Take a look, it has like, um, it behaves like this, right? It behaves like a wave, right? So only um, from our previous discussions, we know that um, only one-to-one -one functions have inverses. So what are one-to-one -one functions? So one-to-one -one functions are past the vertical and horizontal line test. So, um, if you pass a vertical line. So this sine wave right here definitely passes the vertical line test. But unfortunately, if you uh, use a horizontal line test, it doesn't pass. So it is not one-to-one. -one. But if we move down here, we'll see diagrams. So as you can see here, um, if we restrict the domain, if we, if we restrict the domain to, um, uh, what's this? A pi over 2 okay so this is negative pi over 2 to um, positive pi over 2 then it will pass it will now pass our uh, horizontal line test and also our vertical line test so this now has an inverse okay and the inverse is um, on this other on the right side of the graph this is y is equal to uh, arc sine of x so you can write this as arc sine, or you can also write it as um, y is equal to sine inverse of x. Okay, so that's it. So as you can see here, um, um, as we know with inverse functions, now the domain of this um, of uh, y is equal to sine x is now the range of this inverse, and also. Um, the same goes, the range for this y is equal to sine x is now the domain of um, arc sine x. As you can see here, it is um, negative 1 to 1 is the domain and the range and the range is from negative pi to pi. Ah, negative pi over 2 to uh, pi over 2. Okay, the same goes for um, cosine and also for our tangent. So as you can see here, the um, 
the graph of cosine, uh, I mean the domain is limited from 0 to pi. And here is our cosine and same was done for our tangent. Okay, the, so the domain is limited. So between the asymptotes of the tangent and then as you can see right here, um, we have here the arc tangent, the graph of our arc tangent. Okay, so this is the domain and the range of the following uh, trigonometric, uh, inverse trigonometric functions. Uh, as you can see, we have here for the tangent that uh, the domain is um, positive infinity to neg uh, negative infinity to positive infinity, right? Because it stretches all the way out right here in the the in the from negative infinity to positive infinity, and then um, our range is from negative pi over two to pi over two uh, to pi over two only, and the same thing was done for um, cotangent, sec secant, and cosecant. Okay, so that is a brief introduction of uh, these. I mean, brief review of these inverse uh, trigonometric functions. And uh, thank you for watching this video. And hope you learned something. And see you in the next videos.